So pretty much the NBA are are pretty much only going to get more talented and talented, and they're only going to get better. And 2022 is... It's going to be like your typical draft class. There will always be like some good players, but then it will just be a solid average draft class. But it's, but you know, it's like a decent draft class. But 2023 and 2024, that's when the storm comes. And that is when talent is probably going to going to be like in a really, really big basket. So I'm going to just... I'm going to just, you know, throw out a little disclaimer that this is not a true ranking video. It's just five NBA prospects that I'm going to be talking about in this current video. I may, I might make another video just exactly like this, f talking about five other prospects that I'm going to be talking about. So, that being said, the, the first video I'm going to be talking about, the first <laughs> prospect I'm going to be talking about, is Dior Johnson. Now, one thing that is really, 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 like his biggest strength is that he is a he is a true point guard. And every every pretty much every championship team will definitely need a really, really, really good point guard because the point guard pretty much um pretty much would give give a team like playmaking and everything in general, like a really good leader. And Dior Johnson shows a lot of characteristics of being a pretty, really good point guard. Like he's sh he's like one thing that is really big of his game is playmaking. He is a really good playmaker. He's also a really good scorer. I believe he scored like 20 points per game in high school. Um, however. He is known to go to a lot of schools like Mayfair. He played with Josh Christopher, IMG Academy, Oak Hill, Sagittarius, and a lot, a bunch of schools. Like pretty much, again, like I said, he's a really good playmaker. Um, he can shoot the ball. His finishing game is really good. And the NBA comparison I'll give Deer Johnson is well, pretty much a major, a lot of people like from what I've seen. Like, it will be our De'Aaron Fox because he's a really fast guard, um, pretty good finisher. His shooting is solid, not too bad, not not really much of a big concern. And, and my personal comparison is kind of like a somewhat, like a somewhat Derrick Rose, like a Derrick Rose light because his finishing ability resembles Derrick Rose, his playmaking ability resembles Derrick Rose, his his body frame resembles Derrick Rose. It's just Derrick Rose is a way more athletic player than Dior is. But but again, we we have yet to find out because he's going to be a draft class of 2023. And I believe, like, for as of right now, he's projected to be a second-round pick. But but again, like the, it's just because the draft class is really loaded and it is expected to change and we have a whole, like, honestly, like, I think we have basically two years ahead because he's going to, he's most likely going to be in, in the 2023 NBA draft class. Now, the next NBA prospect is, he's also a point guard, but more of a, but also a combo guard, which is, you have more versatility, and it will be Sky Clark. Sky Clark played in Heritage, Heritage High School, I believe, in Tennessee. He's He's originally from, from Los Angeles, California. Um, he his his big strength is he's a really good ball handler and he's a certified bucket. <clears throat> like and one and one of the best things you can have is a player who could play make, uh, be a bucket, and have a great ball handling ability. So like so let's just say if you're a team that that would you know, let's just say you already have a ball, like a point guard. You can, but you know, but you would still, you know, want to take talent. Um, and you could always use a guy like Sky Clark because he he could either you know be your be the point guard of the team, or you could always have him come off the bench and scores, make some buckets. Because 
<clears throat> you cannot really go wrong with him. Um, another big key component is he's a really physically strong NBA player. He weighs like I believe 200 pounds, so that is that is one that is a big plus to his game. Um, I don't really know too much on how good is his defense is, but I'm sure it's not that bad. He's, I mean, he is already physically ready for the NBA as of right now. So if I had to give this man an NBA comparison, like, I don't want to sound like I'm pushing it sometimes, but like, it'll, it'll be kind of like a Kyrie Irving light, or if you want to be really conservative, you could kind of say a Reggie Jackson plus a Eric Butts of body, or you could say um, a Kemba Walker, or you can say a, you can maybe kind of say Terry Rozier, because basically any really shifty point combo guards that could, that would, that could get you buckets, and that could get you, that can also play make, so he's another really special NBA prospect that that any teams would pretty much love to have. And also, don't forget, he's going to also go to Kentucky. And Kentucky, they are known to have a whole lot of talent. And where is he projected to go to? Like, again, he's also, I believe he's also a 2023. He's going to be in the, in the 2023 NBA draft class. So pretty much within two years later. So... And as of right now, he's projected to be like a first-round pick near lottery. But again, things can change really quick because the draft class he is in is extremely loaded. Next video is going to be a really, like a true ideal big man. But he can't really shoot, but he's but he's a, he's a really good, like if, if any team done would need a big man, He's your he's your go to guy. So, and that go to guy is Jalen Duran. Um, he's a like I said, he's a really 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 strong big man. Um, he could grab rebounds, protect the paint, and definitely definitely go down low inside the 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 paint and you know get a dunk, get a get a nice putback. Um, his weakness would be shooting because I never really seeing this guy actually really shoot outside outside out of the three um his free throw seemed kind of low i believe it was somewhere like 40 something percent 50 something percent i don't i don't exactly remember because high school stats are he's a little bit tough to track and but but that could definitely be developed because the best the best part is he's actually going to be in this year's nba draft um and he's only going to be 18 years old when you pick that individual. So one thing that I would always look for if I'm like an NBA team is I would always try to take the younger player. The best ones are the 18 years old, not even 19 years old, because you have a lot more upsides and you can kind of control on how much talent you want this guy to be. Because, again, <laughs> he's a lot younger, so... That means more upsides. And pretty much, like, he would be a perfect fit for the Houston Rockets because the Rockets could definitely use a really, really, so, cert, like, solidified big man. And and honestly, like, if I had to give a comparison with him, it's pretty obvious because Dwight Howard, back in his Orlando Magic days, he was really physically strong. Really athletic, um, crash the boards, bang down low, get a dunk, and he's not, and he's definitely not known to be a shooter, like, <clears throat> but but the current Dwight Howard, obviously, he's shown flashes that he can shoot the ball, and now he he's he's solid at free throws, but Jalen Duren can definitely work on on shooting in general, so. And also, um, he's he's a class of tw- he's the class of 2021. Technically, it's supposed to be 2022, but he, but he skipped his senior year and he so he pretty much went off to college. So I just decided to put class of 2021. Now the next player, he's he's a wing. 
He's he shows a lot of upsides. I mean, a lot of upsides. I mean, if y'all thought Brandon Ingram was the next Kevin Durant or Brandon Boston Jr. was the next Kevin Durant, just wait for my man Imani Bates. So he also goes to the same school, same college as Jalen Duran. It's um, I believe the Memphis Tigers. So pretty much for scoring, he could do everything. I mean, pretty much everything. He could he could slash, he could slash and throw down a ferocious dunk. He is really long like Kevin Durant, which means he is really tough to guard. He is pretty much like I believe he's six foot nine, and he's a really long he's a really long player. Like physically, he's really long. Um, and I believe one of his high school stats is he scored thirty points per game, which is that's basically a really unreal stats. Um, but however, he's not going to be, um, 18 until, um, January, January. So pretty much he's basically the same age, age as I am, but, but again, this man shows a lot of upside and he's got, he's definitely going to be a 2023 NBA draft. And if I was any team and he's available and, and yes, and even though if he may not Fit the roster, I will still take him because one thing that that I would do is you pretty like if the talent outweighs like the fit by that a substantial margin, I would always take talent over fit because when you take the talent, you you never know. You drafted a star and you could probably replace the player that's supposedly gonna be, for example, your small forward. So. I'm just saying, this man is, he's a monster, I'll tell you that much. <clears throat> now, the, now my, my number one player to really, really, really look out for, like, you gotta, like, I mean, look out for. He's a certified killer. You cannot, like, he is, he is six foot five, but he is, like, literally a nightmare to guard. Like, if you had to guard this guy, it's a nightmare. Just say bye-bye, because... That man will be D- DJ Wagner, and what is really special of this of this prospect is his grandfather and his father was in the NBA. So that is already a big plus for DJ Wagner. So what he can do? Well, he's a point guard slash a shooting guard strictly. Probably would be a shooting guard, but <clears throat> what his really key thing is his ball handling is just elite. When I'm talking about elite, I'm talking about Kyrie Irving elite. I'm talking about Allen Iverson elite, and he and he is like one of like I said, one of the toughest players you would actually have to guard. And also, what's even like remember when Kobe Bryant said, um. Thank God, Allen Iverson is not six foot five. Well, I'm. Well, I feel I would probably feel sorry for, um, for for the players in the NBA right now within a few years because this man is six foot five and his game resembles a lot of Allen Iverson. Really, really unguardable. Um, a certified bucket, and pretty much, uh, honestly, he doesn't have any weaknesses. Honestly. So, and pretty much, again, nothing but a bucket. He went to Camden High School, which is one of, you know, the toughest area to grow up to. So, he is already fit, re, already physically, I mean, mentally, mentally prepared for, for the pressure. And another thing about him is he is also a really quiet individual, which means he would pretty much be in a lab all day. He would pretty much have... One of the best worth work ethic, at hardest basically hardest worker in in the NBA. So again, that should wrap up about pretty much like my five NBA prospects that I chose to talk about. So leave a like, comment, and let me know what y'all think about those prospects. Are they gonna are they gonna be superstars? Are they gonna be a buzz? Just let me know. And again, for the last time, I'm going to just throw another disc- 
disclaimer, this is not really a ranking video. It's just the prospects I just choose to talk about in this video. So again, if if you have if you have a favorite pro NBA prospect that is probably in your opinion more talented than than the players on my list, you heard it first. It is not a ranking video. It's just it's just you know it's just the the prospects that I choose to talk about in this video. So again, this should wrap up this video and and thank y'all really much for tuning in.